I don't know if it's because a lot of puppies and dogs today were born or raised in a time where they had very limited socialization, but I have noticed that there's a lot of reactive dogs on the street I see every day. My dog's reactive. Most dogs I follow on social media tend to have reactivity issues. And first off, I just wanna say that it's really normal. Reactivity in dogs is not necessarily the fact that the dog is under socialized or that their owner failed them a lot of the times it could be attributed to things like trauma or even genetic predispositions so first of all let's get rid of the connotation that reactivity equals owner did something wrong the truth is reactivity does make life for us and the dogs a little bit harder than it would be if they weren't reactive and that's obviously because for the dogs they're only reacting this way because they have really strong emotional reactions to certain triggers. It's not easy for them at all. And then for the humans, it's not ideal because it's not fun to go out and, you know, not want to pass a certain neighbor because my dog's gonna freak out or, oh God, there's a dog coming. I don't wanna walk past him because my dog's gonna pull in lunch and all that kind of stuff. So I've come up with a list on reactive dog owner hacks just to make life even a little bit easier for you and your dog. To be clear, this isn't like a reactivity training video. I already have that, I'll link it in the description. But today I just wanna go over some hacks to make life easier. Not training, not improving your dog's reactivity, but just management, I would say. <laughs> The first hack I can share and that really changed my life is to do early morning walks slash go walk at weird times. So this obviously won't apply to all neighborhoods or all places, but I have found that there are certain times when like a bunch of people are outside, whether like it's 8 a.m. before work. So a bunch of people are going to work plus a bunch of dog owners are walking their dogs before work. So 8 a.m for example, for me is a no. Or even like 12.30 p.m., people that work from home, like myself, take their dogs out and then when I go outside, there's like a thousand dogs. So I've actually had to start waking up really early at like 6 a.m. to walk Mochi. That way I could do a whole hour walk and maybe see three people. And at first I was like, oh my God, it's so annoying to wake up early. But honestly, it's been a really positive change in my life. Mochi is able to get a nice long walk in the morning without any stress, any triggers. Secondly, this allows the later walks during the day when they're, it's a little bit harder to avoid people to be a little bit shorter and still mochi is fulfilled. And thirdly, you know, just as a human being, it feels good to wake up early. So this is like not that hard of an adjustment to make in your life if you decide to do this. Um, it takes a few days to get used to, but I have found that it's made my life and mochi's life so much better. And we can actually enjoy our walks without being terrified of the huge crowds of people or dogs that we would see at busier times. My second hack is kind of going off of that, but it's to do longer, but less frequent walks. So once you find maybe two or three pockets of time in your wherever you live that is less crowded slash there's less triggers outside for your reactive dog, I tend to capitalize on those times and go on longer walks instead of going on like four short walks, which I actually used to do. So for example, I used to do like four 30 minute walks a day and three out of four of them were during like busier times. So then those weren't even enjoyable. And I actually felt like Mochi came back home even more stressed than before because of all the triggers he saw. So instead now I actually do again, like one hour walk in the morning, then a mini walk at like 1130 before all the people come outside. And it's actually quite peaceful and we play fetch then. And then we do another walk at like 6 PM. My boyfriend and I take Mochi out with like a flashlight in like the winter. Uh, nighttime darkness, but it's really nice because we barely see anyone. So my second hack, again, find those weird times, like I said in my first hack, and then second tip, capitalize on those times and go on longer walks. My third tip, and this is really important for reactive dogs, is to remember to be engaging during your walks. It's really easy to just go on walks and listen to podcasts or something or listen to music. For example, I could say for myself, I always listen to my true crime podcasts on my AirPods, but it's really important to still be engaging with your dog. So that's not to say that you can't listen to your podcast or listen to your music while you walk your dog. But for example, I only put one AirPod in and then I also bring treats during our walk and we play mini games. For example, like, We'll be walking every few feet. I'll throw a few treats in the grass so much you can sniff, which is really good for your dog's mental enrichment. It's also fun. And most importantly, it keeps me as the most interesting thing on the walk. So this hack is actually more so of a training tip than even a hack, but by being the most engaging thing on your dog's walk, it becomes a lot easier to manage their outbursts because at one point you can even distract them by playing these little games that you've prepared, or it could also just mean building a better bond with your dog. Just remember to be the most interesting thing on your walk. Still let your dog sniff, still let your dog explore their environment, but make sure to bring the attention back to you every you know 10 minutes or something just to make it more engaging and also just more fun tips to be the most engaging again would be to play games like i just said or even bringing some treats or rewards and practicing you know sit or down 
outside, you know, anything to just bond with your dog, engage with your dog, even when you're outside and having a walk. My fourth tip, very similar to my last tip, would be to encourage sniffing. So a lot of dogs actually sniff a lot without needing encouragement. For example, Mochi could sniff one leaf for one hour, I swear. He loves sniffing everything. But if your dog is one of those dogs that just like pulls a leash and wants to go, 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 you can even encourage sniffing by scattering a few trees in high grass because then they'll have to sniff them out and sniff because of that. The reason I say this as a reactive dog tip, because this could apply to any dog, but really important for reactive dogs is that, is that this like works their mind and works their mental enrichment. And sniffing is proven to relax your dog and tire them out. So if we remember what reactive dogs really are, at the end of the day are just very nervous or very extreme emotioned dogs. So if your dog lunges at other dogs, they could be lunging because they freaking love playing with dogs and they're so excited or they could be lunging because they're anxious or fearful or they have a traumatic experience with another dog but at the end of the day it's because their emotions are at an all-time high whether the emotion is positive or negative so by encouraging your dogs to sniff on your walks it helps them kind of rewire their brain to be more relaxed and engage with their environment in a more positive and tiring way than rather bringing their you know adrenaline all the way up when they see their triggers and freak out so yeah encourage sniffing if you need treats, use them, but sniffing equals good for all dogs, but especially reactive dogs. And my last hack, and I feel like a lot of people already know this, but I'll just throw it in there, is to do some high energy exercise before going out on a walk where you're gonna see triggers. So again, for example, with Mochi, before we go on a long walk, I often just do like six throws of fetch with him at this field where there's never anyone. So by doing this, I can physically tire him out and also exercise just like it is for humans, relaxes people, kind of gets that stress out. So first I start with something a little bit more high energy, something requires Mochi to get his blood pumping and running around. And then we go on a one hour stroll where we're gonna see a bunch of triggers anyway. I find that when Mochi is tired, he is way less likely to react. This is due to just him being tired physically, but also I think again, just like the lower stress levels and the lower tension because of that physical exercise he's just had. So I find exercising mochi before a walk to be one of the best hacks I can give all reactive dog owners. It's really easy to stress out from having a reactive dog. I know that I sometimes don't even wanna walk my dog when I know it's gonna be pretty busy like on a nice sunny Sunday because it, it's just really stressful and people without reactive dogs might not be able to relate. But just keep in mind that your dog is having a really hard time too. So first of all, don't blame them, don't punish them. That's the worst thing you can do. But also just take a deep breath because no one's judging you. Your dog is doing their best, you, you're doing their best, but I hope these hacks can just make your life even a little bit easier to manage with your reactive dog. And if you're looking for some training tips rather than hacks for managing a reactive dog, definitely check out the video linked here on the screen, which is my reactive dog 101 video to help rehabilitate your reactive dog.